All right, and there we go. That's the picture. Uh, next step is going to be to find all the studs and measure everything out so we can install the speakers. All right, next we need the stud finder. Just so inconvenient, I can't have the entire garage in here at all times. can't think of anything else I might need that's out here. I'm sure there's something, I just can't remember it now. All right. I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that we've got something here, something here, something here. You know, I'm guessing these are studs that I'm seeing because not all of these are drywall anchors. Like that's a drywall anchor. That's probably in a stud. So I think I've got a pretty good idea. Let's just double check here. Yep, that makes sense. Okay, so. Okay, so there are our studs. We have, that's a pretty obvious spot. We can stick the speaker. As um, far as I know, like I'm curious, is there anything else in here? So I should be able to put a speaker there. Uh, now this one's a little bit interesting because, hmm, got a stud here and a stud here and they're pretty much flanking the middle of the picture. I can go slightly, or sorry, not a stud. I've got open spots here, open spots here. It'd be great if the open spot was here. Not sure what I want to do with that yet. Uh, and then open spot there. So left and right are not a problem. Center is kind of a problem. There's a couple things I can do. Um, one thing I've been considering is running, since I, I bought two sets of speakers or two pairs, I have four in wall speakers and I was considering running dual centers. Uh, the reason for that, I'll go over and show you, is I've got a pretty wide area that I'm trying to sit in. I'm sure you've noticed. And the wider it is, the uh, less in the middle of the sound you're gonna feel. Here, can I pull this out here? There we go. Okay, so I'll take the grill out so you can see what we're working with here. Oh, that had been nice and still. All right, so uh, these tweeters are directional slightly. You know, you can turn them left to right. Uh, so I was considering putting two of them on either side up there and then uh, just tilting the tweeters out to the sides. The reason people say you shouldn't do that is because of something called comb filtering. Uh, comb filtering the layman's definition, because I'm not qualified to give anything other than that, uh, but the layman's definition is if you have two speakers side by side and they're both sending out the same sound waves, well, if they're side by side, there's gonna be a lot of overlap in those sound waves and they're gonna cancel each other out to a degree. So you're not really gonna be getting the full benefits of having them. So that's one reason you wouldn't. Another reason would be I would have to wire them in series or parallel to run them off of uh, the same channel on the amp. And let me see, what impedance are these? Well, somewhere it says. Let's keep digging. There's got to be a spec sheet in here. 8 ohms nominal impedance. 8 ohms. So my choice is I could run them as 16 ohm 
or 4 ohm. 4 ohm for this receiver seems like that's going to be not good. Let's see. And that settles it for us. Uh, this receiver is only safe, well, it's only rated down to six ohms. So we are not gonna run dual speakers in the center because I could wire them up in series and create a 16 ohm load or I could wire them in parallel and create a four ohm load. But neither of those really solve my problem. And these are single voice coil speakers, so I can't solve it that way. Like I can't wire up two voice coils independent of each other. Hmm. I've been, uh, in case anybody's wondering why am I using in-wall speakers not in-wall, uh, I've used them for the past couple of weeks since I bought them, uh, just letting them um, break in so that when I chose to put them into the wall, they'd be ready to go. So here, that doesn't, I don't need to worry about that right now. All right, so one speaker. So it's gonna have to be slightly off center. There's no other way around that. That's unfortunate. Because this is really the best place for the screen. And honestly, it that doesn't really matter because almost everybody who looks at this is going to be viewing it off center. So the speaker being like six or eight inches off center, I know it's not really gonna matter, it's just really gonna bother me because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six gaps in between the studs and it would have been really awesome uh, if that perfectly fit in one of them. So I will probably put it in this stud just as far over as I can. Probably don't really have a choice other than that. All right, here is our template for cutting the wall. Let's see how this compares to a speaker. Actually, why am I trying to take that one out? We have another speaker. It's not being used for anything right now. Definitely not a center channel speaker. Uh-huh, so the uh, rounded edges here are not what we should use. We should square those off, most definitely, okay. That's good to know. That's why you always double check. And then when you tighten these down, I believe it pulls this like this and clamps it against the drywall. So pretty cool design actually. All right, let's measure and mark where this should go. So for determining the height of the center channel or all the channels, the reason to put them behind the screen is so they are, uh, at the right height for dialogue and effects and everything else and you get the real movie theater experience. Uh, you ideally want them to be at the height where the tweeters are gonna be level with your face. Now, I'm sitting about 10 feet away from them and the tweeters have a pretty wide dispersion and I wanna do two levels of seating so I, I can't quite aim them perfectly for everybody but uh, I think if I go right at the height here all right, so that is, we'll call it 38 inches. So if I went 38 inches up for the tweeter, that picks them pretty low mounted, and I don't really want to mount them that low. Uh, the goal here is you want to have them like middle to upper two thirds of the screen. I think if I go dead in the middle, honestly, I think it'll be fine. I don't think that'll be a problem. So, let's see, top to bottom is 57 and a half inches. Uh, so if I go 28 inches up for the tweeter, 
Well, no, I'll do 28. Um, hmm, let me see. So 57. So 57 inches, top to bottom, and the speaker cutout is right at 12 inches. So uh, we're gonna have 45 inches of space. So I'll break that into 22 and a half inches on either side. Okay, so we'll do 22 and a half inches from the top and the bottom. We'll put them dead center. It should be good for pretty much everybody. All right, and then we should have 12 inches in between, just slightly over 12 inches. Okay, so I didn't measure right the first time. Um, it is not 57, it is 57 and three quarters. Okay, so let me make some adjustments. All right, and that will neatly fit right in between the studs. Not a whole lot of room to spare, but it will fit. All right, that's one. Let's cut it out and see how it goes. All right, the premise behind this is pretty simple. Uh, we score the wall use a, a jab saw to cut out the drywall, uh, wire it up, test it, and voila, speaker installed in the wall. I should save the voila till we're done. All right. It's probably not important to be this careful doing it, but the more careful I am now, there's less I potentially have to patch later. All right, let's see how jabby is a jab saw. I could drill a hole to get this started, I suppose. That might be the easiest thing. All right, cut a lot of insulation up that way. So far, so good. Let's clean that up a little. All right, uh, I took a break for something uh, unrelated. Um, I want to be able to put speaker wire binding posts 
on the walls so that instead of just having wires coming out through a hole, I have something, you know, looks a little better, a little more permanent. So I'm going to go ahead and mount these. Uh, I don't actually know what I'm doing. Maybe a surprise. So my plan is to find the stud, cut a hole, mount this up against or, or to the stud using these screws, mount that inside there uh, for anyone who doesn't know how that works. You know, screws on like that. And then that way I've got something I'm going through the top of the box, hook the speaker wire up, and I've got a nice clean terminal uh, on either side, which would certainly make things look a bit more professional. So I'm going to work on that right now. All right, I can't go the same height as those outlets, uh, which would be great for matching everything, but then it's going to be too high for the screen. So do I want to go lower, which would be better for the screen, but I don't think it's going to look as good matched with everything else. This is my theater. I'm going to do it how I want. All right, so I'm going to go... I'll measure this for real in a minute. I'll go 10 to 15. Okay, so I want to go here to there is the stud, and then I want to be See, that seems awfully tall for the outlet. No, that's about right. Okay, so I want to be mounted right here. So. Go one smaller, a little bit easier to undo if I do something wrong. Not enough torque. All right, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I way off? Studs right there, fantastic. All right, I could have gone a little bit farther to the left, it looks like. All right, that was a little nerve wracking, not gonna lie. Uh, so the stud is right here. All right, and the mounting plate should just barely cover the hole. I'll go smaller in the next one. Everything's a learning experience. All right, so that works. Um, what doesn't work is I can't actually reach the holes to screw it in. But I have a solution for that. And this isn't gonna be taking like a strong electrical load or anything. add some new screw holes in the side of the box here since I've got to cut this piece in the top out anyway all right holes in the box
right. Just about perfect. All right, so I'm going to insert this in here. Uh, I'm not going to do this quite yet, by the way, because I need to get the speaker wire run. But then I can reach those. I can screw those in. Yeah, I think this will work. Okay, so I need to cut the lines a little bit clearer, cleaner on the next ones, so I've got less to patch. Um, but yeah, I don't think this is going to be that bad. I was a little bit nervous going into this. You can probably tell I haven't done a whole lot of this before. Uh, but I'm taking the DIY part of home DIY pretty seriously. I want an awesome budget theater, and I will cut and patch a bunch of holes in the drywall if I need to.